It's only a matter of weeks before winter gives way to snow, sleet, rain, and mud, turning something as simple as walking the dog before a morning commute into quite the miserable chore if you venture out unprotected. In this EDC Essentials Guide, we're getting ahead of the curve and have rounded up everything from your classic rain jacket to rugged waterproof boots to pocketable gear of all kinds that come equipped with the proper tech to keep out moisture, dirt, and debris. Before we jump in, this EDC Essentials Guide covers weatherproof EDC of varying resistance, and it's important to know the difference between waterproof and water resistant, and how they're measured on the IP scale created by the IEC as a standard benchmark. We'll get into the numbers in just a bit, but to summarize, waterproof gear is generally going to carry an IP rating at or above IP6-7, to while water resistant will fall below. Again, we'll get into more detail about the specifics of the IP rating system as we go through each piece individually, but you can expect all of our picks to build in considerable protection against water, dust, dirt, and debris, even if they're not explicitly waterproof with a documented IP. So with that being said, let us dive right in with our first pick from Danner. With American heritage dating back to 1932 in the Pacific Northwest, Danner's pioneering spirit is sewn into every pair of boots they produced for almost a century. Now, Danner continues to innovate with new materials and a fresh focus on sustainability. The Danner Tramline 917 Chelsea boot is one that made our list as a great weatherproof all-arounder that can keep your wardrobe tailored and your feet dry while venturing through the city or for any quick weekend excursions. Weatherproofing can be discreet with the help of modern materials, and certainly doesn't always look how it did decades ago. At first glance, you'd be incorrect assuming the Tramline 917 was just your average pair of Chelsea's, most of which aren't known for their rugged build quality or frankly built with any sort of moisture prevention. But the Tramline 917's have a few tricks up their sleeve. It's Gore-Tex, as Costanza would say. Gore-Tex makes their material out of a signature polymer called EPTFE, a technology patented and then refined dating back to the 1950s. Inside the Tramline 917 is a Gore-Tex liner to keep your socks dry, warm, and breathable all at the same time. Let's back up a second and take a closer look at the Nubuck Leather Upper. Nubuck Leather is a great choice here as it looks the part of suede with a visibly soft appearance and might we add soft to the touch without being as susceptible to the elements. Suede is also leather, true, but Nubuck has a beat with more grain, a thicker cut, and it'll return to its original color after the moisture evaporates without any stains or watermarks. Now, our guide is technically the best weatherproof EDC, but Danner goes one step further and rates the tram lines as 100% waterproof, not just water resistant by way of the Gore-Tex liner. There's no IP rating, but if it did, it would score high. A boot's midsole is going to provide the bulk of the underfoot feel. In other words, does it feel soft or bouncy? Does it feel stiff or unpliable? The Tramline 917s use Vibram, a very common sole, specifically SPE which is a combination of traditional rubber and EVA, a high-density foam. After testing it out, the boot has a very, very quick break-in period. The midsole is soft and conforming, and Nubuck is equally soft despite its durability. In just a few days, we were able to achieve a fit that typically takes weeks for a host of other boots. Plus, the Ortholite footbud inside cradles the heel, and it really helps with support. Speaking of durability, the outsole is a Vibram 917, as the name suggests, and it'll keep the midsole protected while providing a high degree of traction, especially important in the rain or the snow. After quite a while, it's an inevitability that your tram lines will eventually wear down with regular use, as even the best-built boots eventually succumb to the laws of thermodynamics. Danner's recrafting program takes aim at unnecessary waste by resoling and thus extending the life of your boot. Not every single Danner is eligible, but the Tramline 917s use a stitch-down technique far more premium than cementing that allows Danner's passionate recrafting craftsmen to resole your tramlines once the original has lost its life. Essentially, the upper is bent outward and then stitched down into the midsole. That can be even more weather-resistant than a durable Goodyear weld. Danner makes the program available for any eligible pair of boots, and to take advantage of the program, Danner's website has a convenient tool to get you started. Although the program isn't free, quotes are often far less than the original MSRP, and as a benefit, you get to preserve the upper you've worked so hard to break in. Seiko's Pro Specs line is short for Pro Specifications, so any reference that uses this moniker is going to have ridiculously hard-wearing build qualities that will hold up to just about any conditions you'd encounter on the day-to-day. -day. There are many Seiko Pro Specs, all of which build in considerable water resistance, so we'll simply highlight one of our absolute favorites, the iconic Seiko Turtle that stands as a testament to Seiko's diver prowess with 200 meters of durable water resistance and a handsome design. Seiko has a very well-documented diver history. In fact, if you're looking for a budget diver under $1,000 or even under $500, Seiko, as well as fellow Japanese contemporary citizen, are unmatched. 
For just under $500, you're going to get 200 meters or about 660 feet of water resistance, courtesy of a very hard-wearing 45mm turtle shell shaped case, yes, hence the nickname, and an offset screw down crown at the fore. As a measure of goodwill, Silco confirms the SRPE93 passes the testing criteria set by the ISO, and as such is ISO 6425 compliant. Boiled down, the ISO doesn't perform testing on its own, but provides guidelines by which a manufacturer can, if they so choose to do so, test the durability of their diver to see how they perform. If the diver passes the test, the manufacturer can advertise the watch is ISO 6425 compliant. For a watch marketed as having 200 meters of water resistance, the watch is actually tested at overpressure at a depth of 250 meters to check for any condensation or leaks within inside the case. There's also temperature, shock resistance, and anti-magnetism within the 6425 stamp, but for weather resistance, that's the gist. Under a flat hard lex, Seiko Zone, with a solid application of AR coating on the interior, the dial is classic through and through, and traditionally Seiko with bubbly, highly visible Lumabrite hands and indices, especially so when combined with the chunky black unidirectional timing bezel. Inside, Seiko uses the very prolific Seiko 4R36 that beats at 21,600 BPH and it maintains a power reserve of about 41 hours. Most of the modern Prospects line will use this movement and it's easily serviceable and highly reliable with simple automatic winding. Also, as is the case with most Seiko divers, securing the turtle to the wrist is a thick but highly comfortable black silicone strap with the Prospects embossing on the end, branded stainless buckle hardware, and a 22mm width. Go check out the rest of the Prospects line, as the Turtle is the most classic of the bunch. If you're looking for something with more character and more color, you have spades of options, all packing in considerable water resistance. An IP rating is something you'll eventually come across in the gear space. In 1976, the International Electromechanical Commission, or IEC, came up with a system to rate the ingress protection, IP, of closures and casings against water, dirt, dust, and debris. It's a standard that's been overwhelmingly adopted by engineers and manufacturers as a way of quickly classifying the exact standard by which their product is built. It works similarly to the standard set by the ISO for dive watches, but a bit more specific. An IP rating is essentially two numbers that correspond to solids and water molecules. Take for example IP68, the rating of this Phoenix TK20R UE flashlight. It has ingress protection IP, against solids at a level 6, meaning it's sealed tight and it won't be susceptible to dust for, at the very least, 2-8 to eight hours of bombardment. The last digit, 8, is the water resistance rating. 8 is the highest you can go, so this flashlight can withstand pressures at a depth for long periods of time without incursion. And this depth rating is a few meters of prolonged immersion, not just temporary immersion. An IP68 rating is the highest rating a commercial product can get, as the scale goes from 0 to 6 on the solid front and 0 to 8 on the water front, with the special exception of a 9 rating, but that's a rating for pressurized water tests. That all being said, the Phoenix TK20R UE builds in maximum protection against the elements, and all for around $150. Here's what you get. A 2800 lumen max output, a max beam distance of 465 meters, a 6.05 inch length, a turbo mode at 2800 lumens for 3 hours, a high mode at 1000 lumens for 3.25 hours, a medium mode at 350 lumens for 9 hours, and a low mode at 30 lumens for 40 hours. True one-handed operation using the built-in FlexiSense control toggle, a rechargeable 5000 mAh 21700 battery, and USB Type-C charging. Arcteryx is a prominent leader in the outdoor space, perhaps THE leader depending on who you ask, and as such, offers a laundry list of tough, weatherproof and fully waterproof gear. One of our favorite all-weather EDC picks is the Granville Crossbody with tape seams for added weather protection, water-resistant zip tracks, and repellent N400R AC nylon ripstop fabric. We think we can speak for most of us that picture outdoor gear when we think weatherproof or waterproof EDC. And by outdoor, we mean outside of a city environment. But hey, it rains everywhere, and if you get caught without an umbrella and have some serious walking to do, especially carrying tech EDC, as the majority of us do now, you want to be well equipped. The Granville is a simple 6.6 inch tall by 13.5 inch long crossbody bag with one main watertight compartment and one smaller organization pocket, a breathable aerofoam back panel, and a reconfigurable strap. Let's take a closer look at the nylon ripstop. Sometimes it's hard to get an idea as to just how weather resistant something is without seeing it in action, so here's a little test for you. There's no official IP rating, bags usually don't carry one, but the coated nylon does seem to hold up quite well. Inside, the Granville is fairly rudimentary and built to hold just a day or so worth of EDC. 
There is only one zippered pocket inside that's big enough to fit a phone or a wallet if you'd like a little extra protection. The rest of your EDC has to fit inside the Granville's main compartment that doesn't have any subdivision. The main undivided compartment is endlessly reconfigurable, but we were able to fit a waterproof wallet, pocket knife, notebook, and a battery pack, as well as a pair of waterproof earbuds and a ring of keys attached to the high-vis orange key leash within the only zippered compartment. Arcteryx bags are known for their taped construction method, but don't be fooled however, this isn't your run-of-the-mill scotch tape. The construction method is extremely durable, and most of all, far more weatherproof than stitching, which creates holes and therefore more potential points of ingress. The taping and darts on the front corners also give the bag a visibly sleek look, without any visible stitches from the outside. As much as we love the Granville and its weatherproof design, we do wish Arcteryx built in a slightly better strap. This one isn't bad per se, but it feels a little lackluster and a little thin for the price without any padding. It is fully adjustable and removable, however, as it just attaches to the loops at the bag's endpoints. With clothing, waterproofing involves a few steps. First, you're going to have to look to synthetic based materials like polyester or other petroleum based products instead of natural fibers, more often than not. Second, manufacturers often add coatings on top of the textile to even further waterproof the weave, because although the synthetic fibers themselves won't absorb water, incursion can happen within the tiny spaces of the weave itself, no matter how tight or well made. The North Face Drizzle Future Light Jacket uses a 100% recycled Future Light 3L polyester face with a 100% recycled nylon tricot backer and a non-PFC durable water repellent finish to make sure the wearer stays 100% dry. Like Arcteryx, the North Face puts a lot of resources into R&D and uses label testing and industry experts to ensure their gear operates and functions at the highest level. With weatherproof or waterproof gear, there's a component of longevity that needs to be considered as well. Will the material degrade over time and eventually let water in? How will it perform 1 year, 5 years, or even 10 years down the line with regular use? For the Future Light Jacket, the Synthetic Construction and Durable Water Repellent Coating, or DWR, will keep the jacket in good standing for decades, and if something happens, the jacket comes with a limited lifetime warranty against defects in the material and craftsmanship. Now let's move on to features. The Midweight Rain Jacket builds in three zip pockets here, here, and here, as well as an adjustable hood and an internal stow pocket for really important EDC like a smartphone. At the bottom, the Future Light Rain Jacket also builds in an adjustable elastic band to clinch the waist. Ever heard of wind chill? Well, that's a huge factor in temperature regulation. Not only is the jacket protected against water, but it's also fully windproof. Wind can quickly lower body temperature, and if you're wet, evaporative cooling happens extremely fast. In really compromising environments, this can quickly lead to hypothermia in temperatures that aren't necessarily all that cold. So if you want the highest level of protection, look for a jacket like the Future Light that pays attention to both rain and wind. The North Face Future Light Drizzle Jacket comes in a few different colors, if black isn't quite your thing, and comes in sizes ranging from small all the way up to 3XL. Electronics and water don't mix, but why exactly? H2O itself doesn't actually create the issue. Damage comes by way of the tiny ions, minerals, and impurities water carries with it. Ions link up, send a current of electricity where it doesn't belong, and then boom, fried. There are a few more factors, and it's a bit more complex than that, of course, but that's the gist, and it's incredibly difficult to fully waterproof electronics. But Nightcore has done it with a number of their hardwaring products, like the NPB1 power bank that has a stunning IP68 rating. Remember the IP system? Well, yeah, the 8 in IP68 means the Nightcore NPB1 can sit fully submerged in 2 meters of water for up to 30 minutes without any incursion, and this is with the fully uncapped ports at the end. Let's walk you through how Nightcore protects the battery system inside. First, this is a 21,700 lithium ion battery with a 5,000 milliamp hour 3.64 volt capacity with a 5 volt micro USB input and a 5 volt USB A 3.0 output. 21,700 batteries were actually developed in tandem with the rise of the electronic car industry and are more energy dense than your standard 18650. That's similar in size and shape. Speaking of shape, the NPB1 is ultra compact as well only slightly larger than the battery cell it packs inside. Dimensionally, that's a hair over 4 inches long. Speaking in layman's, 5000 mAh is enough power reserved to charge your standard iPhone battery one time over. Nightcore officially tested this with the iPhone 11, but the battery size in recent releases is just about the same, so you can expect similar performance with the newest iPhone line. Ok, now back to water resistance. At the very top built into the charging ports is a silicone o-ring, as this is the most obvious area of concern. Next, internally, is a glue pouring system that essentially eliminates any air from the battery pack. 
So even if water did get in somehow, it would have no way to even come close to the vital electronic components. Lastly, of course, is the external shell made of a fire-resistant polycarbonate that's impact and shock resistant up to one meter. That is to say, the occasional drop shouldn't impact the overall longevity of its fully waterproof build. Let's say you've already invested in EDC that doesn't in and of itself build in protection against water. In other words, gear very low on the IP scale, if at all. Luckily, there are a slew of brands that make waterproof pouches and dry bags. Among the best is Magpul, and our pick to protect small to medium EDC is the DACA waterproof window pouch. There are a handful of construction cues that make the DACA waterproof pouches, well, waterproof. First is the material. Magpul uses unique polymer-infused panels held together with hard-wearing RF-welded seams that offer a waterproof seal all the way around the periphery. Second, the zipper. A 100% waterproof YKK AquaGuard zip and zip track attached to a 550 paracord zip pull. As powerfully protective as it is, it's pretty damn easy to open, and not all waterproof zip tracks are built this convenient. Magpul makes the DACA pouch in a small, medium, and large size. The small is 6x9 inches, and the large size is up to 9x13. Despite the size, they're all constructed the exact same way, with a colorful back panel, of which there are three options, and a semi-transparent front panel to quickly identify where your EDC is packed away at all times. Portable audio has come a long way very fast. I mean, what hasn't, am I right? Not only do we have wireless earbuds with crazy fidelity and solid battery life, but now we have ones with full protection against the elements. JBL makes the Reflect Aero TWS earbuds, a Red Dot Design Award winner with an impressive IP68 rating. That means you can keep the Aero submerged in water, even salt water as long as you rinse them off after use, at a depth of 2 meters or about 5 feet for up to 30 minutes without any problems. There are other earbuds that claim to have some sort of IP rating, but like the Apple AirPods, it's limited and certainly not immune to accidental or even intentional submersion. If you're someone that frequents the outdoors, regularly exerts himself with strenuous exercise, or just needs an audio companion you don't really need to baby, the JBL Reflect Aero TWS earbuds are a strong contender. There's obviously a lot to cover in this very small package, so with very little time, here's the 3000 foot view. First, the IP68 rating. Again, this means full protection against solid particles and completely waterproof. Next is three mics on each earbud for listening and taking calls, with 6.8mm drivers. And lastly, battery life. 8 hour power reserves in the earbuds themselves and a 16 hour reserve in the wireless charging case, for a total of up to 24 hours of listening time per charge, and it comes with a 15 minute rapid charge rate for up to 4 hours of quick listening. Back to the IP rating for just a second. Even though JBL doesn't officially disclose the proprietary methods they use to shore up the sky high rating, the high marks is exactly why we chose these earbuds for this specific list. Our favorite part? Seeing that the IP rating allows submersion up to 2 meters, using them for just about anything like exercising or hiking or even something like snorkeling means you can rinse them off in clean water without having to worry about damaging the electronics. Keep in mind that although these earbuds themselves are IP rated, JBL doesn't explicitly say the charging case maintains the same level of dust and water protection, so we'd proceed with caution. Although if we were to take a guess, we'd also assume it comes with considerable water protection. Your typical sheet of copy paper or notebook paper under a microscope is highly porous, and that's actually important to accept standard ink without smudging. You want the ink to be able to absorb quickly, then dry quickly. However, what if you need to write, but you need to do so in acclimate weather and subpar conditions? Normal paper is going to quickly turn back into the pulp it started as, and even if it didn't, the ink would bleed disastrously all across the page. Well, write in the rain allows you to write in the rain. It's a fun play on words and their notebooks, much like the Field Notes Expedition notebooks, are specifically designed to handle water, sweat, grease, mud, or even the accidental coffee spill. The Right in the Rain All Weather Universal Notebooks come in a pack of three 3.25 inch by 4.625 inch saddle stitch, fully waterproof notebooks that will work in the elements with a standard number two pencil or one of Right in the Rain's all weather pens, of which there are a few. These line notebooks are made in the USA, in Tacoma, Washington, using nickel-plated staples to hold the pages together, a durable, flexible wraparound cover, and 24 total pages across 12 folded sheets. All the way back in 1916, entrepreneur Jerry Darling created a non-synthetic, wood-based system for creating paper that would hold up for loggers working in some of the Pacific Northwest's most taxing environments. The proprietary coating JD developed over 100 years ago has only since been refined using modern ingredients, but the wood-based paper hasn't much changed. 
Unlike synthetic paper, the Write in the Rain notebooks won't melt with high temperatures, and they can even be recycled. Write in the Rain has also knowingly, to the best of their ability, kept dangerous PFAS out of their environmentally friendly manufacturing process that also involves sustainable soy-based inks. We'll leave you with this. We ran a little test so you could see how water interacts with the pages and the cover while using an all-weather bolt-action pen provided by Write in the Rain to see how the notebooks performed. Truth be told, they are precisely as advertised. The pen glides across the page after it got wet, and after having written your masterpiece, no smudging. Check it out. Naturally, if you want to write in the rain, you're going to need a writing utensil that can also withstand the elements. If you don't have one of write in the rain's own, let us introduce you to the Fisher Space Bullet Pen, a classic ballpoint pen with a pressurized cartridge that caught the eye of NASA back in 1967. Who doesn't love EDC gear with a rad piece of history attached? It's like the Omega Speedmaster. In fact, the Fisher Space Pen, as we said before, may be THE EDC pen to pair with the Speedy, now that we think of it. Anyway, back in 67 during the Apollo missions, NASA needed a reliable writing instrument better than a pencil, and after seeing that Fisher themselves spent over 1 million of their own funding on the R&D of what would eventually be called the Fisher Space Pen, NASA purchased 400 units at a price point of $6 each. The secret was a pressurized ink cartridge that could and can still function in a weightless environment, underwater, in other liquids like oil and grease, and in temperature extremes ranging from minus 30 degrees to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. As cool and space agey as it looks on the outside, the pressurized cartridge here is really what you're paying for. And there's also the full brass construction underneath, making it far more corrosion resistant than stainless steel. Writing with a pen tip downward with Earth's gravity isn't an issue. The G-Force naturally pulls the ink down through the ballpoint tip as you put pen to paper. The issue is writing in any other direction, which many do for a slew of different reasons and in a slew of different professions. But you don't need to go to space to use the pen, obviously. There are a litany of difficult writing tasks right here on terra firma that make having a space pen handy. Writing upside down being the most obvious, but writing in the rain as well. In terms of refills, once the ink runs dry, your best bet is to pick up a dedicated Fisher replacement from their site, which can be found for about 8 bucks. And for EDC, the space pen is small at 3.77 inches long when closed, and it makes one hell of an all-weather pocket companion. We all know and love the rugged Pelican phone cases, and perhaps even water bottles, but they also manufacture a slew of other EDC like this fully waterproof and RFID-protected G5 personal utility wallet. Sure, credit cards are technically already waterproof and carrying around cash is slowly becoming a relic of the past, but the G5 Personal Utility RF Field Wallet isn't just for water resistance. Like the infamous Pelican phone cases, this unit is crush proof with an IP67 rating and it sports full RFID protection. IP67 allows for submersion up to 1 meter for up to 30 minutes, just one notch shy of IP68 which tests at 2 meters. And if you have any issues with any of these fronts, Pelican offers a generous lifetime guarantee on the field wallet. The G5 Personal Utility RF field wallet measures 5 inches by 3 inches by 0.8 inches thick, and it sports a rubber interior that uses an elastomeric strap and a mesh organizer to organize your financial carry as you see fit. Capacity sits at about 10 cards, give or take, with a decent fold of cash within the two rubber straps here and here. If you have any overflow, not to worry. The field wallet also builds in an external rear rubber strap for quick access. You may be thinking, isn't every knife technically weatherproof? Well, yeah, typically metal does fare better against water and the elements, far better than electronics, paper, and textiles. Ever heard of rust? Well, yeah, corrosion is a major concern with knives. The Spyderco Caribbean Salt Sheep's Foot Knife uses LC200N, a nitrogen and chromium-rich alloy, achieving its hardness through a conventional heat treatment process, and it offers unparalleled corrosion resistance and toughness to beat. Blade steel is measured across four metrics, ease of sharpening, edge retention, toughness, and corrosion resistance. LC200N is a very specific steel for a very specific application. It tests extremely high for corrosion resistance and maintains a hardness of about 60 HRC. And it's great if you need a knife to survive regular exposure to moisture, especially salt water, which corrodes steel even faster than fresh water due to the abundance of dissolved ions that speed up the formation of rust. The Caribbean Salt Sheep's Foot Knife even uses LC200N liners to keep the corrosion resistance high even within the interior portions of the handle as well, this one using ribbed, waterproof G10 scales. That, by the way, build in insane grip. It's a Spyderco exclusive that employs a leaf-like spring from a split liner in the handle to wedge laterally between a ramp on the blade tang and the stop pin. It's ridiculously easy to use and super strong as well. Check it out. 
And as a last note, the Caribbean Salt uses a corrosion-resistant reversible titanium pocket clip in typical Spyderco form and function. Black Ember out of California has a track record for using only the latest feats of textile and manufacturing advancements to craft their line of carry solutions. Our pick for one of the best weatherproof EDC backpacks is the Black Ember Citadel 25, the third addition to the growing Citadel catalog that sews together Cordura's new 420D Velocity, the latest textile in the Cordura Recore RN66 collection. Not only does Black Ember use this new creation from Cordura, but they are the first official manufacturer to do so. Each outer panel is woven, well, typically welded together using Black Ember's own bond stitching process that uses laser cutting for high precision, employs YKK AquaGuard zip tracks to protect highly susceptible incursion points, and builds in waterproof hypalon poles for each of the zippers themselves that can lock together for extra security, like this. Premium details include Fidlock magnetic hardware, T6 aircraft grade anodized aluminum hardware, and a 200 denier matte silver ripstop nylon lining on the interior that contrasts a sleek outer black silhouette. Check out the fabric in action after running some tests. The water runs off the Cordura's extremely tight weave and it can sit on the surface for extended periods of time without any risk of ingress. As the product name lays out, the latest Citadel has 25 liters of storage capacity. It's really a perfect size for EDC, with just enough space to accommodate a day's worth of EDC essentials, keeping them dry in the process. Here's a run through of the layout and what we were able to fit. A flat water bottle in the front horizontal pocket, a flashlight, ring of keys, a pen, and a knife in the zip pocket at the bag's top, a piece of literature in the backmost zip pocket that extends the entire length of the bag's back face that could also certainly be used for a large laptop, and within the main compartment, a rain jacket and a 13-inch laptop, a simple composition book within the magnetically sealed sleeve opposite the laptop sleeve that we feel could also accommodate a small MacBook Air, a battery pack, a pair of earbuds, and a wallet in the zip pocket just north, some reserve notebooks within a dry pouch, and a composition book with a ton of space left over within this zip pocket here. Last but certainly not least, here's how it wears on person. Comfortable, fully adjustable, secure via the Fidlock hardware, and fully protected against the rain. So that's the end of our guide, and at the end of the day, it's difficult to tame the elements and the raw power of Mother Nature, but as we've covered, it's certainly possible with the right design, materials, and care. So drop us a line below and let us know your favorite weatherproof and waterproof EDC essentials.